Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about what will happen if money was removed from society. And this is going to require a little bit of imagination and some deep thinking and imagining practical, impl impl practical implementations of this, this potential scenario. Imagine if you woke up tomorrow morning and and money didn't exist. There was like this, this, you know, some magical force came down and wiped clean all our memories, wiped everything clean, and we all woke up not knowing what money was, not knowing how money works, and we would look into your wallet and wonder what this weird pieces of paper are. You have no recollection of using money and so forth. And yet we have to continue living. What would happen if money was removed out of society? Well, it was that thought that actually led me down the path of launching the Ubuntu movement and eventually developing the One Small Town philosophy. And I had this thought in 2004, 2005, while I was researching the origins of humankind. Uh, that led to my first book called Slave Species of God. And, uh, and it became a fascinating journey and of discovery and I might add, a very exciting journey of discovery because I forced myself to really think about the, the harsh reality of not having money. Imagine you wake up and you walk out of your garden and your, your, you know, your slate has been wiped clean. You can see everything. You can see your dogs. You know your dog's names. You know where you live. You know your name. But there's just no recollection of money and how things work. There are factories that people go and work, but they forget. They don't know that they're supposed to earn this thing called money. So just imagine that anything to do with money has been erased and removed. What happens next? How do we go to bed at the end of that day? And what happens over the next few weeks and months? How will we survive? What are we going to do? Where are, we going to, where are we going to get food from? Where are we going to get electricity from? Where are we going to get medical help from and technology and inventions? Where is all that going to come from? So I started to think about practical implications. First of all, how are we going to feed ourselves? Right? So food, without food, we're all going to die. Water is a lot easier because water, you know, we get streams and boreholes and springs and, and things like that. So to get water is not always as difficult as it is to get food because food you need to grow unless you're a forager and you live near a, a forest filled with food and fruits and so forth. But ultimately we have to get the seeds and we have to plant the food. So what this does, it forces you to think about the practical things that we need in our lives to survive. If money doesn't exist, if you can't go to the store and buy food, which means we're going to have to grow food. But then the problem is that most of us don't even know how to grow food. Most of us don't even know how to prepare the soil to grow the food. We don't know about nutrients and compost and effective microorganisms and mycelium and all the things that you need, the minerals in the soil to actually help the food grow healthy and, uh, and nutritiously. So suddenly we realize how important it is to have people with true knowledge about certain skills and not necessarily have the money. Because no amount of money can force somebody to grow food for you if they don't want to grow food for you. The only reason people grow food is because they sell it and the entire financial structure has been set up so that if our farmers don't grow food, they can't make money and they can't sell it to the factories that then make the food that we eat. And we end up getting the food from the farmers via a long and winding road that is not, necessary, not always necessary. So we're going to have to start growing our own food. And for that, we need the experts that grow food. Well, the experts will not have any recollection of money either. Uh, or if money simply doesn't exist and it's just been removed and there's no way for us to mint more money or create more money, we just have to somehow survive, right? So we're going to start growing food. And then we're going to start distributing the food to ourselves. And somehow, because there's no money, because nobody can pay you for the food, you're gonna, you as the food grower is going to have to start growing the food and making a plan to get it to the people that need it 
and in a way that you can also survive from it. So what happened to me during that period, and I would like you to go through this process yourself. Please, I urge you, go through this process and imagine what will happen if money did not exist. How will we grow food? How will we build computers? How will we distribute things? How will we create electricity? And so forth and so forth and so forth. And what will happen? You start to realize very quickly. At the moment you remove money from the system, you are in essence removing the biggest hurdle to progress that we face as humanity. Because if you think about it, Everything we try and do, all the things we try and do, whether it's building a house or starting a business or, or baking bread or anything we try and do, there's always a thing of, well, where am I going to get the money to do that? Where am I going to get the money to buy the ingredients to bake my bread? Where am I going to get the money to do X, Y, and Z? And then we rush off to the bank and we might go to the bank with the best possible business idea. Right? You might be living in a small village or a small community of a thousand or two thousand people and there's no bakery. No one is baking bread for your community. So you go to the bank with a very, what you believe is to be a, a sound and feasible business plan and you present it to the banker and the bankers look at this and they go, we are terribly sorry, Mr. Smith, but unfortunately your business plan is not financially viable. So we're not going to give you money to build your bakery so you can make bread to feed your community. And suddenly we realize that every step of the way, every step of our lives, everything we want to do, the bankers and the banks and the money is in control. They, the banks and the money, become those who give us permission and allow us to actually make our dreams become a reality. In what normal, sane world is that okay? Clearly, that is not a kind of world that we want to live in. Where bankers have the final say whether we can do something and we can't do something, whether it's financially viable or not. Well, if I bake bread, will it, will it feed my people, my community? Of course it will. So, imagine if, if we remove the money and we no longer need to go to the bank and we just get the people that know how to grow wheat and we grow enough wheat to, to bake enough bread for our entire community and have some bread left that we can, we can send over to our neighbors so that they, they can also have bread. And suddenly we've solved that problem in a heartbeat. If we know how to grow seeds, if we know how to grow wheat and all the ingredients we need for bread, and we know how to make the ovens to bake the bread in, why do we need the bankers? And that's what you start to realize how the banks and the financial institutions have completely and utterly infiltrated our world, our lives, and make us think it's okay. Make us believe that that's just the way the world works. Imagine if we didn't have money, we wouldn't be able to do anything. No, it's actually completely the opposite. The more you go down this rabbit hole, the more you imagine a world without money, the, more, the bigger the smile on your face is going to become. Because as you go through these potential obstacles, what seem to be insurmountable problems that we can't solve because we don't have any money to do anything, as you go through one process after another and you realize that the moment we remove money from the system, everything becomes a lot easier. We've removed the biggest hurdle and the biggest obstacle to human progress. The moment we cut ourselves off for the need of money for us to achieve or to achieve doing something, we have truly become liberated and free from the enslavement of the world, the financial world that we find ourselves in, the financial slavery system that we find ourselves in. So go and do this exercise and imagine a world without money. And suddenly you realize Everything's going to change. If we remove money from the system, where we no longer need money to do anything, but we rather agree to do everything we need that is done by people that are experts and good at what they're doing, and if all of us contribute enough time and effort towards doing what we are good at, 
So the bakers bake, the, the food growers grow food, the laptop designers design laptops, the chip makers make the, the chips for the laptops. You, you see where I'm going with this. So you don't force people to do something that they're not good at. That is not a solution. We can't all say we must all grow our own food. That's not, that's not going to work because most people have no idea how to grow food. But if we all just get together in our community and say, okay, well, um, who's going to grow the food? Then the farmers will grow the food. The IT guys will do the IT and the architects will do the architectural designs for our homes. The brick makers will make the bricks and so forth. Now, imagine if we all do this enough time every day so we create enough for ourselves. There's never, ever a need for any money. And yet we can create abundance beyond our wildest imagination if we simply all cooperate and collaborate. So when you go through this process, imagine a world without money. You wake up tomorrow morning, there's no money in the world. And then think about how easily and how quickly we can create an absolute utopian world of prosperity and abundance by simply cooperating, collaborating and not ever thinking about that we need money or the permission from the banks to be able to do what we want to do. And this is also, also very um, directly connected to the legal system, to what we are allowed to do and not allowed to do. So not only does money restrict what we can do, but now our governments that are supposed to be our servants are making rule, rules and laws and regulations that prevent us from growing this or building this or, or inventing that or using this technology or that technology or healing ourselves with special herbs that grow naturally. We're not allowed to heal ourselves. Otherwise, our doctors get jailed. Can you, can you see how the money and the legal system have combined? Like in the ancient times in those ancient temples, where those first priest kings were dispensing money and making the rules, well, nothing has changed. The whole world is still trapped in this money and legal um, institution collaboration to control humanity. And um, imagine this. Imagine sending a mission to Mars. This, I like this little little example just to show you how ludicrous money is or the idea of money is. Um, imagine we're going to send a, a spaceship to Mars and, um, and we're going to start a colony on Mars. So we get together and it's a big spaceship. It can take like you know 2,000 people. So we're going to send 2,000 people to Mars and now we start choosing all the different types of people that we need from the carpenters to the doctors to the the food growers to the bakers and so forth and so forth and we we've got the perfect blend of the people we're going to send to mars right and we're going to we send the ship off they arrive at mars and they establish their little community they start building their houses, laying out the towns, and they look at the land that they're going to grow food in. They find water, they generate their own electricity. And within 12 months or 24 months, they've got this incredible cohesive community going where everything is working. There's plenty of food coming in. We've got our own electricity on Mars. We've got water and got bread and milk and all the other food we're growing. We've got technology because we brought the technology with us and we're replicating it there. And everyone is very, very happy because it's working perfectly and working smoothly. We're doing research. We've got our labs established. At which point do you call the community together and you share the following information with them? As from tomorrow, we're going to start issuing this thing called money. And the doctors are going to earn the most money because they are very special for some obscure reason. The guys that bake bread are not going to earn anywhere near as much money as the doctors. The scientists in the labs are going to earn good money, but not as much as the um, whoever else. And the guys that are cleaning the streets and maintaining everything, they're going to get paid very little because they really are the lowest scum of the world, right? At which point do you call the, me the, the community together and you share this information with them? At no point. Because if you do this, you will have an immediate revolt. They will take you out. They'll probably stone you and carry on with life as it is. Without the need for money, where everything is working smoothly. 
where everyone is doing what they're supposed to do and delivering to the well-being of the entire community. And money will never be introduced because the people will not allow you to introduce this idea of money. It's going to create segregation, separation, class structure, an upper class, a middle class, a lower class, and, and just mess up the entire system. So I'm going to leave you on that point and by saying that the moment you remove money from the system, everything changes. Everything. Because everything changes about the way we live, the way we grow food, the way we build houses, the way we design our towns and villages, the, what transport we use, what technology we use. Do we have new energy technology for levitation technology? What communication devices we use? What education we have? Etc. Etc. Everything changes. That's what happens when you take money out of society. And it changes for the better, not for the worse. Because money is never ever used as a tool or a hurdle to prevent people from achieving the great um, ambitions and the desires and, and their talents in life and their dreams. So that's what the ultimate goal of all humanity should be, is to recognize what money is. It's a tool of enslavement. Its primary objective is to keep people enslaved to a few people in the world that control the supply and the creation and the supply of money called the banking elite. The moment we can create an alternative system that no longer needs that money because we're creating everything we need for ourselves, this entire financial system collapses literally overnight because it cannot ever sustain itself. And on that note, it's Michael Tellinger. Until our next thought for the day, bye for now.